In our first story, the Ghana Health Service says it will continue to intensify the country's preparedness activities and heighten surveillance at all entry points to ensure citizens are safe and secure from the COVID-19 virus. The assurance follows the confirmation of the first coronavirus case in Nigeria, the first in Sub-Saharan Africa. The patient is an Italian citizen who works in Nigeria and flew into the commercial city of Lagos from Milan on Tuesday, February 25. Nigeria's health minister says he is stable with no serious symptoms and is being treated at a hospital in the city. It is an Italian citizen who works in Nigeria and returned from Milan, Italy to Lagos, Nigeria on the 25th of February 2020. He actually landed here in the evening of the 24th, but uh, by the time he got into his residence in Lagos already 25th, he was confirmed by the virology laboratory of the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, which is a part of the laboratory network of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. The patient is clinically stable, symptoms, and is being managed at the Infectious Disease Hospital in Yaba, Lagos. The government of Nigeria, through the Federal Ministry of Health, has been strengthening measures to ensure an outbreak in Nigeria is controlled and contained quickly. The multi-sectoral coronavirus preparedness group led by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has immediately activated its National Emergency Operations Center and will work closely with Lagos State Health Authorities, or let us say is already working closely with Lagos State Health Authorities to respond to this case and implement. I wish to assure all Nigerians that we have been beefing up our preparedness and capabilities since the first confirmation of cases in China. Ghana has so far instituted measures, including temperature checks at the airport to detect suspected cases. The case in Nigeria have approved that temperature checks, though necessary, are not very helpful in detecting cases. We would shortly be speaking with the National Coordinator for Port Health, at the Ghana Health Service on what this means for the country's preparedness so far. And then would we'll also be joined by a Ghanaian doctor doing his specialty in uh, Wenzhou, uh, Akiti Jolali. Let's first bring you this statement uh, from the issued by the Ghana Health Service seeking to reassure Ghanaians it is on top of the situation. And uh, it reads, the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, has received news of the confirmation of the first case of coronavirus disease, COVID-19, in Nigeria, a sub-regional neighbor, on February 27, 2020. We wish to take the opportunity to reassure Ghanaians that we will continue to intensify our preparedness activities and heightened surveillance at all points of entry to ensure that all citizens are safe and secure. Meanwhile, we entreat the general public to stick to the following precautionary measures, and these precautionary measures are very important. One, regularly wash hands with soap under running water, or if possible, use hand sanitizers regularly. Two, practice common cough sneezing etiquette, such as covering of mouth with handkerchief or tissue paper when coughing or sneezing. If you have recently arrived from any of the countries that have reported a case, we advise you stay away from crowd self-quarantine for at least 14 days. In cases of persistent cough or fever, contact the call center for assistance on these lines. And they indicate the list of lines as follows. Now, we're going, uh, joining us on phone now is uh, Dr. Uh, Den is Lae, uh, is the National Coordinator for Port Health at the Ghana Health Service. Before then, though, let's speak with the uh, Ghanaian doctor doing his specialty in Wenzhou, Akiti Jolali. Thank you very much. Um, for joining us, uh, Doctor. Now, you have been following the virus from, the, from China, where this actually started. What can you tell us again? And we have actually spoken with us before and told us about the measures that have been put in place at the airport and saying that they are not foolproof. Now, Nigeria has a case, and they're clearly showing that the, indeed the temperature checks are not very helpful in detecting cases. What do you make of the Nigerian case, first of all? Um, hello, good evening to your viewers. Um, I think the Nigerian case is, is 
so unfortunate that they couldn't pick it up at the airport. As I've said earlier, just temperature check at the airport, we won't get this to because the person may be in the, in the incubation period. So, but the good thing is that they've been able to pick it up early and they are doing contact tracing. So we just pray that they will be able to contain in the, the disease in Nigeria. All right, so for you, remind us again, how do you think we can better approach this issue? If you're saying that the temperature checks, and that has been proving in Nigeria, uh, it's not very helpful. Um, <laughs> I think the temperature check is, I'm not saying it's not helpful, but it's one of the, it's one of the, 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 the precautions needed. But looking at how the virus, how the virus takes take charge, you realize that somebody can come into the country from these affected nations in the incubation period, for us, we will, I will advise that um, we we kind of isolate all those coming from these countries. If possible, we should we should actually, as a government, we should, we should actually prevent all flights coming from China from 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 from, from entering Ghana. That's a uh... Quite a difficult thing to do, don't you think? Yes, yes, I know it's a difficult thing to do. Because um, looking at this whole situation, when something happens in Ghana, right? Uh, we are talking about the, the emergency centers that, that have been allocated for the coronavirus virus issues. When something happens in Ghana, you should know that our transport system is different. From the from those here, our, our way of communication is different. How is the how is Ghana Health Service taking communication in, into consideration? We we've had people going to the coronary centers and they are told that they sh their bloods have been taken. They should go and come back later on for the results. All right, uh, Dr. Steven Akiti, we we'll want to leave it here, uh, not completely done with you, but we'll be uh, coming back to you. We're looking at uh, some other angles of the story. A member of parliament for Kumbungu, Ras uh, Mubarak, has expressed concern over President Kufadu's safety against the COVID-19 outbreak while he tours Europe. Ras Mubarak, on the floor of parliament, quizzes the majority leader of Seche Minsabons whether the president will be quarantined upon his return. Speaking on the floor of the house, he quizzes the majority leader let's hear him. Mr. Speaker, 80,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. Now, Mr. Speaker, 80,000 cases in 45 countries, with Nigeria being the latest. Mr. Speaker, some of our colleagues are on official and private businesses outside of the country. Um, could the leader of the house give the following indications? One, what measures are being put in place to ensure that the right honorable speaker, staff of parliament, and members of parliament are not at any risk of contracting the coronavirus? Secondly, Mr. Speaker, could we, as a matter of urgency, invite the Minister of Health to further give indication as to the levels of, of the country's preparedness in protecting Ghanaians generally from the coronavirus. And finally, Mr. Speaker, um, could my honorable friend confirm whether upon arrival in the country from his European tour, his Excellency, the President, would be quarantined. And Mr. Speaker, I say so because the, the President of Mongolia has been quarantined for the 14-day 14, 14 mandatory period. And Mr. Speaker, His Excellency, the President, has visited Norway, which has recorded a case of coronavirus. It will be very helpful to get an indication as to whether or not 
His Excellency will be quarantined when he arrives in the country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. The majority leader said protection from coronavirus is being treated holistically and not specifically targeted at risk officials. He said the health minister would have to come to update the MPs on what is being done to protect Ghanaians generally. Speaker, um, the Honorable uh, Rasmurak, uh, as of what measures are being put in place to ensure that, Mr. Speaker, your good self and members of parliament are protected from the coronavirus. Mr. Speaker, um, Mr. Speaker, the protection of Ghanaian people would have to be universal. It doesn't have to be done for members of parliament and the speaker alone, um, which is why the, the, the minister came here to explain where we are as at the time he appeared in the chamber. Speaker, I, I agree with colleagues that perhaps given that a lot of water has passed under the bridge, it may become necessary for the Minister of Health to come back again and upgrade us and indeed update us about the status of the, the, the country, our state of preparedness um, in, in confronting the dread that is confronting the world. As to the, the request by the Honorable Mubrak that the president would have to be quarantined when he arrives. Mr. Speaker, I want to believe that it was said in jest. I want to believe that it was really said in jest. Uh, because if anybody needs to be quarantined, I believe we have to start with the Honorable Ras Mubarak. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I've seen and indeed heard him uh, occasionally coughing, and we are not too sure where, where it's coming from. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to start with him and really interrogate <laughs> clinically where the cough is coming because it's been persistent. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <laughs> persistent and consistent. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we need to be careful. Right, so we're returning to uh, Skype and to speak with uh, the Ghanaian doctor in Wenzhou, China, Akiti Steving. Now, Dr. Akiti, you've heard, uh, I'm sure you've heard the conversations going on here in Ghana in Parliament House, but I want to find out from you, what's the situation right now in China as far as the outbreak is concerned? Okay, so currently in China, we know that for the past five days, we've had less than 500 new cases. And, um, and the recovery cases as of 12, 12 midnight today happen to be more than 37,000. So things are getting better. Essential services are back. Um, so we're talking about the banks. The markets are open just from morning till 4 p.m. Hospitals are also open. But then the, the precautions are still there. You have to wear your masks. Uh, you have to always wash your hands. All, all the precautions are there. You can't be seen in the restaurant eat. You have to always take a takeout. It's still the same. But for those in Wuhan, they are still under lock. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, do hold on for us. Uh, joining us on phone now is, Dr., uh, is Dennis Lai, who is the National Coordinator for Port Health at the Ghana Health Service. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Lai, for making time to speak with us. Now, we've heard about the case in Nigeria, and indeed the Ghana Health Service has issued a statement to that effect. The question I want to find out from you, considering how it happened or the case that came about in Nigeria, is Ghana intending to do anything different from what we are already doing at the airport? Thank you very much, um, Israel, and um, good evening to the viewers. I, I think that the, the, the fact that we are all you know, talking more about it, especially today because um, we've had a case in Nigeria, says a lot about how you know, we are all anxious about it. And I think that our anxiety should be channeled into making sure that we prevent it from spreading if we should get a case in Ghana. In terms of our preparation, it's, it's a moving target. So we keep amending or, or 
changing our preparedness plan based on the situations we have on hand. For example, um, now that there's a case confirmed in Nigeria, it just means that we need to look critically more at other things we may not be doing or may not be pursuing more aggressively, like our, our land um, entry points. And the case, for example, about you know the illegal routes have also come up because even if we look at the legal route, they are still the illegal ones. So we need to find ways of making sure that we can be able to get full control of the situation. And part of it is to engage the public. Because if people understand the risk of the disease, how it is spread, and what we can do to prevent it, people can still fall ill in the community and we will not have an outbreak on our hands because the necessary precautions have been taken. So those are some of the things we are doing. At our airport, we have intensified our surveillance and the screening efforts for staff uh, for passengers arriving from all countries. Indeed, at the onset, we're focused on only airlines that had connections to China. So we're not doing that now. And I personally uh, came from Abuja a few days ago, and I had to go through the screening process. It didn't matter that I was coming from a country which then had not recorded a case. So those are some of the things we are doing at the airport. And the continuous engagement of the general public. I don't think I can stress that enough. Because it's a disease that can be easily spread from person to person mm -hmm. if we don't adhere to basic things such as, you know, cough etiquette and, and hand mm -hmm. hygiene, which is washing our hands either with water and soap or using a, an alcohol hand wrap. So these are some of the measures in place and which we are also strengthening to ensure that if we report the case, it doesn't spread or get out of hand. All right, so Dr. Lai, we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Stephen Akiti, who is in China and who happens to be quite close to what is happening. Now, he is suggesting that Ghana probably would have to simply ban all flights coming in from China or anybody coming in from China uh, should be kept out. What do you make of it? And is this something that you'd like to propose? So, for example, if we listen, um, when the WHO declared the outbreak of public health emergency of international concern, they were emphatic that it should not lead to travel or trade restrictions. And, and we, Ghana is a significant to what we call the international health regulation, which enjoins countries to adhere to some of these principles. So, as, as a health system, and knowing that it's not this China that, for example, is affected now, are we saying, and I'm, I'm just stretching things far, but are we saying that we should, for example, ban all the countries where we have cases now? Because they, we, we cannot have a basis for discriminating against one country or the other. Because the risk is always there. It may be higher for some countries. But a lower risk does not mean that it won't happen. It can even happen with the lower risk. The case in point for Nigeria, for example, person came from Italy. So assuming Nigeria had banned flights from China, they would still have had a case of coronavirus from a different country. So I think that the precautions are the key thing. Fortunately for us, there's, there's a capacity for this country to be able to diagnose the disease. And so once we can be able to diagnose this, and this can be done quickly, Noguchi has been able to do the diagnosis very quickly for us. And, and the Kumase Center for Collaborative uh, Research in Kumase also has the capacity to diagnose. So there can be that promptness in diagnosing to ensure that the necessary measures are also uh, put in place promptly to prevent spread. And I think that these are things we need to hold on strongly to and work to ensure that we don't get an outbreak in Ghana. All right, I'd like to uh, get uh, Dr. Stephen Akiti to respond to that. No, so Dr. Stephen Akiti, as you heard uh, Dr. Laie say, we can't, it would be virtually impossible to say that, or impractical to, impractical to say we're banning all flights from China because they could come from other countries uh, apart from China. What do you make of that? Um, I, I strongly believe that um, apart from all this happening, the, the main thing is the preventive bit of it. If, if flights can't be banned, 
some few some few countries have had this done already but if ghana can't have that done then then i think uh, the precautionary measures need to be put in place preventive measures need to be put in place i think the media has to start making a lot of campaign pain on the preventive measures of coronavirus. And also to encourage people to come out if they have any of these symptoms. All right. Now, Dr. Akiti, I, I want to ask you this. The people, how are these cases managed in China? When somebody contracts the virus or gets the disease, how is the person managed? Is the person are they able to cure these people? So, so I like to start with people who are suspected cases. In China, as of now, when when somebody has fever, cough, somebody sneezes, the person will just call a, a, a contact, and the police and the ambulance will come for you to the hospital, run the test. When they run the test and you are confirmed then that means that you'll be started on fluids, oxygen, and you'll be given certain medication. Virtually, they are looking at a certain prevent, they are, they are looking at controlling all the signs and symptoms that you have. Also, they'll be giving you uh, antiviral medication. They've also found out that uh, chloroquine, chloroquine can cure this. They also give a, a medication we call flavipiravir and remdesivir. Those are medications that have been given now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akiti. I'd like to bounce that off, uh, Dr. Dennis Laye. So, Dr. Dennis Laye, you heard what uh, Dr. Steven Akiti says and how they are managing the cases. Is that the same way we're preparing to manage the cases? And uh, he's saying that common chloroquine. It's also part of uh, the treatment. Well, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm happy he reinforced what I said, which is that we need to focus on the prevention. And prevention will be based on public knowledge on this. So we would also appeal to the media. I'll, I'll join him in appealing to the media to, to keep educating the public on this. In terms of treatment, there are a lot of things being tried because, again, this is a new disease. So there are a lot of things being tried. And I think that... Uh, I don't want to say we will probably be in a better position if we should get a case, because hopefully others have been able to, to get um, ahead of us in terms of experiences in, in managing such cases. So we're hoping that we don't get cases. We're hoping that the measures we're putting in place prevent us from getting an outbreak in Ghana. But if we should get there, I think that we have to learn from what others have done. I'm not sure if we still have chloroquine in Ghana, though, because we've stopped using chloroquine for a while. So, uh, but if it gets to the point where it is chloroquine we need, I'm sure that the necessary measures uh, will be put in place to ensure that we can be able to, to manage cases. But I think that we should keep hammering on prevention, which I think is our best weapon um, in this case. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dennis Lai. He's the uh, National Coordinator for Port Health and the Ghana Health Service. And the other question I'd, I would have loved to la ask uh, Dr. Kitty, if he's still on, is for him to reinforce the point that when you get the disease, it does not necessarily mean that you're going to die. Uh, Dr. Kitty, are you able to tell us that? Yes, please. Um, when you get the disease, it doesn't mean you're going to die. Now, every viral infection, when your immune system is strong enough, you can fight it. For the, for the coronavirus, we've realized that those who are immunocompromised, the old, the very young, those who are on cancer medications, those who are on steroids, those with diabetes, all those who are immunocompromised, they are those that we've realized that their death tolls, tolls have gone up. All right. Yes. But those with good immune systems. So we advise that people exercise, you hydrate yourselves, you take your vitamins, and you stay strong. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akiti. And that advice uh, is very good advice, and I hope uh, we're all taking that. Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, here in Ghana, the Upper West Regional Chief Imam Al-Haji Osman Mahama Kanihi has led a number of imams 
at the White Central Mosque to pray for God to intervene in the outbreak of the coronavirus, which has now become a global disease. He said the essence of the prayer is for God to come to the aid of mankind, take away the virus, and, the, and leave the people, so that the people will live uh, healthy lives. Since the outbreak of the disease in Wuhan, China, it has killed over 2,700 people and several thousand confirmed cases. Joining us, Upper West Region correspondent Rafi Salam was at the Wa Central Mosque, where the prayers were said in our report. The Adua, or special prayers, who took the form of reading from the Holy Quran and individual prayers, was well attended by senior clerics from the Orthodox Muslim sect, most of whom from the Lemire clan. The prayers were said under the auspices of the Upper West Regional Chief Imam, Al Haji Osman Mahamakani, immediately after the Friday congregational prayer. They prayed to Almighty Allah to come to the aid of mankind by taking the virus away from them. <laughs> An administrative assistant to the regional chief imam, Alaji Zedu Tamimu, who spoke on behalf of the regional chief imam, said the prayers is not only for Ghana but for the entire world. We expect God to answer our prayers. We expect God to answer our prayers and then take the virus away from the world. We understand that it has come as far as Nigeria and it's in, in Iran and every other place. We are just praying that God will come to the aid of mankind. God can do everything. The 